Queen. Good morning to you. Is there anybody else on the line with you right now? I have the other commissioner on the line, and I believe that's it. Great. Uh, commissioner Bryan, are you with us? Commissioner Bryan, are you with us? All right, Brantley, what we'll do, uh, Mr. Chairman, if we can, call the meeting to order, and we'll go from there. April 16, 2013, Board of County Commission for Gulf County is now in session. Thank you. At this time, we're going to turn it over to our attorney, Mr. Novak. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate that, um, and I thank everybody for coming out this morning on our emergency special meeting. Um, we have two items on the agenda this morning. Our first is an emergency commission meeting. Um, further request of um, special counsel for the county with regards to our BP claims, both on TDC and county. Uh, this morning we've called an emergency meeting um, in order to address uh, the Tourist Development Council BP claims, first and foremost. And then after that, we've noticed a special closed emergency special session meeting with the county commission uh, to follow up with the, to the status of the county claims. Um, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, as we progress, each of the attorneys will come in and make a presentation to you. The first meeting is subject to sunshine and open to the public uh, for purposes of the discussion of the status of the BP TDC claims. Um, procedurally, if I can, and you have sat through these, I believe this is our third one, I just want to revisit the uh, procedures that we follow under the statute of 286. Uh, most notably, uh, subsection 011, we have a requirement to notice this meeting. The chairman has uh, authorized that. We've provided 24-hour notice of today. Um, the first meeting is open to the public. Ms. Trudy Downs is here with us today for the closed session meeting that will follow immediately after our open meeting. Um, but if there's no other questions with regards to the procedure, um, you each have a copy of the notice that was posted in front of you um, with regards to the uh, topics that will be discussed today. Um, Mr. Chairman, is there any questions from the Commission or your, yourself? No. Okay. Um, if, you, if I may, I'd like to uh, ask Mr. Drake Martin of Nix Patterson to come up and uh, uh, introduce himself. Uh, he's been joined by some of his team here today. Um, and we'll First item on the agenda is the Tourist Development Council BP claim, um, and Drake, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you Attorney Novak, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here today on short notice. I know that it's difficult sometimes. Let me make sure everybody can hear me okay. Um, I know it's difficult sometimes can you, to can you, uh, Yes, sir. Can you give, uh, give the name to the clerk? Yes, my name is Drake Martin, D-R-A-K-E-M-A-R-T-I-N with Nix, Patterson, and Roach. Thank you. I know it's difficult to get together on short notice. Sometimes governmental entities don't act like private entities, and it's difficult to get through the notice period, and I know that you had other things planned today, so I appreciate you being here on short notice. If it wasn't important, we wouldn't have called the meeting. And the importance stems from the fact that we are approaching the three-year anniversary of the oil spill. Uh, that's important for a multitude of reasons, not the least of which is we're approaching the statute of limitation if we want to pursue litigation against BP and keep all avenues open for the county to pursue their claim against BP. Some decisions have to be made in advance of April 20th, uh, which is coming up next week. We have properly presented the TDC's claim to, DDC, T, to uh, BP uh, in a matter which was consistent with OPA 90, which is the federal legislation that controls these types of claims, at least 90 days in advance of pursuing litigation against BP to give BP exploration production the opportunity to confront our claim and to try and treat us reasonably, negotiate a fair settlement without the necessity of litigation. And we have an offer that has come in at the last minute, which necessitated this meeting in advance of the statute of limitations. So I appreciate you coming together. A little bit of background on the TDC's claim. You'll recall we were uh, here previously with regard to an interim recovery for the TDC. That interim recovery did not bar you from making a future recovery uh, in anticipation of a full and final release and settlement for the TDC. But just some background on how we calculated the TDC's losses. We approach this from an econometric model standpoint where we look not just at the year-over-year -year growth or by comparing your TDC revenues to prior years, 
we looked at some of the economic realities that were going on in Gulf County, not the least of which was the addition of an international airport, which was going to lead to more visitor traffic and an increase in visitor spending, which we believe was a reality that came online in 2010 that, quite frankly, did not exist in 9, 8, or 7 or any of these prior years. And I think the numbers bear out the fact that we were correct. <coughs> but in putting together that econometric model, BP has always used more of a comparison approach where you compare your 2010 revenues to prior years. They've used a multitude of comparison approaches when they worked as BP, when they worked through the GCCF, the Gulf Coast Claims Facility, to calculate losses. Most recently, as they work through the court-supervised class settlement that they refer to as the uh, DHECC. And then now, as they try to resolve governmental claims and claims for anybody that was either excluded from the class settlement as governmental claims were, or anybody who was excluded from a private claims basis or an opt-out basis. That has allowed us to use our econometric model and compare it to BP's comparison models so that we're not just pulling a number out of a hat. We're really looking at what we believe the economic reality of Gulf County to be and comparing that with BP's comparison approaches so that we can see which of those approaches, if any, fit the Gulf County TDC's model, okay? That's how we put the claim together. Now, we had to, obviously, in looking at our numbers and making our arguments, the Gulf County TDC has experienced growth continuously since 2007, which, as you can imagine, puts us in a difficult position from the standpoint of making an argument to show what your losses were. I'm sure you've seen in the paper over and over again that BP consistently claims that if you were up in 2010 over 2009 or 8 and 7 your prior years that you had no loss and therefore your claim should be zero. <coughs> the TDC's numbers, uh, that argument is, is probably made a little bit more difficult because you had uh, not just a net push, so to speak, you had a net gain uh, over prior years. In 2007, the total revenues for tourism development tax revenues were 642,000 in 2007. In 2008, they were 692,000. 2009, they were 732,000, the year preceding the spill. In 2010, they did, the revenues did not go down. They went up by $9,000 in total for the year to $741,000. So that is the argument articulated that BP makes that your 2010 revenues didn't go down, they went up, therefore the argument in the press at least is that your claim should be zero. In the face of that, because we were able to rely not just on a comparison approach but an econometric model that took into account the economic reality of the airport, we were able to effectively make a recovery for 2010 losses in the face of the $9,000 gain of $119,000 additional money for the TDC. Mm -hmm. So the question then became, we had resolved the claims through 2010, through December 2010. The question is, what losses, if any, were we experiencing going forward into 2011? Because BP contemplates paying what they refer to as a risk transfer premium, which contains in some part your future actual losses, but also the risk that you're assuming going forward that they are now putting on you and taking off of them, that if there is some negative impact, negative continuing impact from the oil spill in the future, that risk falls upon you and not upon BP. That's the other component of the risk transfer premium. So going forward and looking at your 2011 numbers, we see that the tourism development tax revenue continues to climb. In 2011, the total was 841000 and you eclipsed your 2011 numbers before you even got into the fourth quarter of 2012. So the climb continues. The component of that, which is future actual losses, is an even more difficult argument to make. So we have negotiated with BP consistently leading up to January 19th when we actually had to present your claim. We were made an offer at that point in time before the uh, uh, presentment, which we did not feel was something that was in the zone of reasonableness that was fair or reasonable <coughs> under the circumstances. I communicated with Mr. Novak about that. We decided to present the claim and to continue to move forward, and our doing so has resulted in a, an offer that came in recently in the last 48 hours, 72 hours, I guess, over the weekend. Um, that is a, uh, an offer to resolve 
the future losses for the TDC in the amount of two hundred and forty six thousand dollars. That's new money. So the two hundred and forty six thousand dollars in addition to the one hundred nineteen thousand dollars previously collected is a total of three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars. To put that in perspective, as it relates to your 2010 revenues, that is roughly 50% of your 2010 revenues, okay? So our job here has been to do exactly what you instructed to do us to do in the beginning, and that is to find a fair and reasonable resolution to the TDC's claim without either extorting money from BP or, or asking for something to which you do not feel you were entitled to use a reasonable methodology to come up with a reasonable offer. And we believe that we have an offer for the TDC that is in that zone of reasonableness. Now that being said, that's our only job. Our job is not to recommend settlement. That is uh, your job to consider whether or not that is, is fair and reasonable for the TDC. What complicates this just a little bit is the fact that because the TDC is a political subdivision of the county. The county gets to make the decision whether the TDC's component of that offer is fair, which is a separate offer so that you can see how they arrived at the numbers from what the county's component of the settlement offer is. We do not represent the county on that claim. We don't know what that number is. I certainly have no way to tell whether or not that's reasonable, but I suspect that that part of the recovery may be the driver as to whether or not the total settlement is fair or not. So I leave that completely to your better judgment and to your discretion uh, as to how you want to proceed with that matter. We're glad to be helpful in any way that we can. If you decide to pursue uh, the claim through litigation, we're here to, to be in a supportive role in any way that you see fit. Uh, other than that, that's the offer, that's the reasoning behind it, and if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer them. I, I, Drake, I, I appreciate the, the presentation. That's, that's a very good uh, uh, presentation of, of the facts of the way it's been and the way it's gone. We appreciate uh, the, the fact that y'all had a difficult time arguing the point, even though there was increases in revenues, that there was a substantial loss for the, the TDC and Gulf County. So uh, I appreciate that. And we'll, I guess we'll have to take that under advisement once we go to the other part of, of, of this meeting. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. Mr. Chairman, just so I know, and uh, while Drake's with us, I also discussed this with uh, Ms. Jenkins, so we reviewed the numbers as well that have come in and where we're at, um, and we've discussed that. So as we go forward, you know, in terms of going back to the TDC Council and their familiarity with the numbers that are there, just as Drake's presented them from day one, we've discussed that uh, the representation of the numbers haven't changed, and the formulas and what they've pushed for have always been consistent. So as he's indicated today, um, the numbers are an, an accurate reflection of what they've been uh, coming up with in terms of their formulas. Um, but as again, just to emphasize the word that he used was the driver. Obviously that was the purpose of the second component of this meeting today, which is when the commission will obviously discuss that with regards to the other half of this claim, which is with BP, which is the county's component, which will help ultimately help you uh, guide you in your decisions that you make today. All right, uh, question please. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, have you uh, discussed this with the TDC board? Uh, do they have any uh, uh, with this monetary <laughs> figure that's being offered? No, sir. We have a uh, meeting tomorrow right. morning. How do you feel? Putting you on the spot there with this offer there. I think that if, if you advise us that it's reasonable, and I um, spoke with Mr. Novak about it, then it is a reasonable number. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, before uh, we move on to the next segment, if there's any public comment for the purposes of, for the purposes of this meeting, um, Mr. Chairman, if you can't ask anybody for the public, they'd like to comment, um, offer any comments to the commission, or else I can move on procedurally to the next component. Do we have any comments from the public? Any comments from the public? Any comments from the public? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I ask to uh, go into our next session, just so I can familiarize you all, um, a couple of the key components about sunshine and going into this closed session as we've discussed in the past. Um, it needs to be an expression of the attorneys that we need to negotiate and discuss specific uh, issues with regards to this uh, litigation, most notably your settlement or strategy. Um, upon that request, we ask the commission, if they would, to uh, go into closed session. Uh, to properly properly notice that closed session meeting also that there is a court reporter here under statute that will take the and transcribe 
uh, verbatim the conversation. That will become public record um, at a later date when the uh, litigation is resolved, and that will be released and put into the uh, custodian of records, which is the clerk's office, and that, that transcript will be become a public record at that time. But for purposes of a closed session meeting, the discussion and the parties that have been noticed in the actual notice you have in front of you will be there to discuss the other component of this that we've discussed in closed session in the past. So if there's no further questions, I'd ask the chairman, if we can, uh, to uh, request to go into closed session. And upon that motion and approval, we'll give everyone about three or four minutes, Ms. Downs, an opportunity to get set up and also to have the um, recording uh, stopped in the back room as well. Chairman, so move to proceed into Got closed session. Second. Motion by Mr. Yeager, second, second by Mr. Mike Daniel. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries 4 0. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if we can, we'll just recess for about three minutes. We'll make sure we have the conferencing going as well. Yes, recess for three minutes. <laughs> 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 